Nancy says her 21-year-old daughter Amanda's depression is taking over her life. If she doesn't get help soon, she fears the worst. Joining us now via Skype is Stacy's husband and Amanda's stepdad, David. How much would you say that Stacy and her daughter and Amanda depend on each other? I wake up in the morning, my wife's crying. I come home, my daughter's crying. What do you find is the biggest problem in their relationship from your perspective? My wife takes too much care of her. I mean, like, uh, Amanda can't get up and cook her own meals. Uh, she's constantly mm -hmm. sleeping. She doesn't take care of the house. She doesn't pay any, you know, any board. Do you feel that Amanda? Um, uh, do you feel that Amanda's capable of doing all those things on her own? Absolutely, a absolutely. Amanda is a strong, smart human being, mm -hmm. and uh, she has to take on the responsibility of an adult. And I don't think her mother's allowing her to do it. What would you like to see for Amanda's future? I love to see her have friends, a good relationship, um, a great husband, mm. great kids, um, a full life. Amanda, what do you see? What do you want for yourself? I want to be able to get help so this way I can do stuff on my own, mm. like an apartment, get married, um, <laughs> complete college, stuff like that. And I hear that you want to be a teacher, right? Yes. You're very excited about that, but <laughs> yes, it's a very important job. And you're going to be influencing many, many children and young minds. So Stacy, yes. you have your reservations about that, though. Do you have doubts that Amanda can achieve her dream of becoming a teacher? The path that she's taken now, yes. What's the problem with the path that she's taking? The depression and the anxiety that she has I feel that it holds her back so much. She can do it. Oh, she Mom, but you're holding her back. If you can't I'm believe in her, then who is? I'm not the only one holding her back. You are? Sure you are. Your, anxi your anxiety right now is holding me back. Because <laughs> I'm like, and I'm, real, and I'm really concerned about this Suboxin use because I don't even understand why you're doing Suboxin. Be it's a crutch. Oh. It's a crutch, David. Yeah. Yeah, and when I couldn't get off the, when the doctor gave me the pills and the pills ran out, Judy, I know that I can take a ride down, the, ride five miles down the road and go pick up a bag, and I didn't want to pick that bag up, so instead I got on a, a prescription medicine, did not knowing that I was going to be on it. Fast forward four years. And a doctor's still prescribing you? You're legally getting a absolutely. prescription? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Well, you need to really refocus on that because I think right. now you, and I'm not a doctor, but Judy, four years on, on yes. a drug. Time. I, I'm Long. sorry. I, I'm not aware of what, what kind of drug is it? Suboxone is a maintenance drug for people who have been addicted to opiates before. Okay. So it gives them this physiological stability that sometimes withdrawals come on and now they can't an... manage. But it shouldn't be a long-term thing. And I know you're aware right. that in the field there is a lot of controversy about being on it at all in the first place. But if you're on it, it should be a short-term thing that tapers. Right. You're supposed to be learning coping strategies to deal with And basically any weaning off of it? Right. Here's the concerning thing that I see. I believe that your behaviors and what you're saying to your daughter, I know they come from a good place, but they are maintenance factors for her depression. It triggers her to say, maybe I can't do it too. Do you understand Absolutely, those negative thoughts then become her own?